Hey, hey everyone. I'm Hi. good. Um, I have a G on my head. I guess it's good G for Google and also G for gorgeous geeks. Um, I, this might fall off in a minute, but for now, I'll let it stay on. I'm doing well, and uh, hopefully I can also share some of the work-life balance tips and how to maintain a strong team culture during the pandemic with all of you. Um, as uh, everyone mentioned, please do put your comments into um, the live stream and we can answer them later. All right, so um, to begin with, uh, I hope you all have your phone with you. Please do um, go to this link, menti.com, and put in the code 523021. So I want to start with a quick um, pulse on how you guys are all feeling. And when you start, um, when you put in the code, I should be able to see who has um, signed in, or at least not who, but like how many people have signed in. So I see one person. This is meant to be interactive. It's all anonymous, so don't worry. Please do punch this into your phone. It's all going to be a lot of fun. If we have no more than one person, then I might skip this. OK, we have two, three. <laughs> Thank you. Maybe needed more time for you to sign in. Okay. All right. So we have four people for now. All right. I'm just going to go, go ahead and start. Um, the rest of you who want to join later, you can also join. Again, the code is 523021. So first question, maybe a little bit heavy, but how are you feeling during this whole COVID-19 situation? Um, so put in a word or a few words and just key in what you are feeling on your phone. And then a, a word cloud will come up. Hope you guys are writing in what you're feeling. Oh, okay, good. So yeah, feeling anxious, blue, confused, lonely, a little bit stressful. I definitely can relate to all of them. Very uncertain environments, yep. So hopefully today in my session, um, I'll be able to, someone's feeling great, that's good. <laughs> um, but hopefully in my session today, I'll be able to share some practical tips with you all to help you feel better, better than anxious, better than uncertain um, during this time. Um, not just for yourself, but also for your team. All right, hope you can all see my screen. So yes, today we're going to be talking about the two main topics of work-life balance and team culture. First of all, um, work-life balance. So I've been hearing a lot of these from my coworkers, my friends, and some of them are from myself. Hopefully you can relate to some of these as well. I mean, we're all in this together. So there are a lot of different sentiment during work life, uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic right now that relates to work-life balance. Um, most of these are not so good, kind of relating to what you said before about being anxious, a lot of uncertainty. So what can we actually do? So balance is different from person to person, right? And even for yourself, maybe at different stages of your life, balance will mean something different to you. So today, um, I, I will be sharing this deck uh, with you all later on. Um, so today, I won't be going through all of these things, but I'm going to be focusing on um, three of them very briefly. So with prioritization, obviously, everything becomes more urgent when you don't have clear priorities or when you feel like you're unable to push back on lower impact requests. So having clear, measurable goals as a leader with your team, um, setting concrete priorities and empowering your team to push back when sensible, that is very important. Next, having role clarity. Imagine not knowing what your role is in terms of pushing towards your team's goals, not understanding what is expected, expected of someone at their level. Um, it can leave people feeling anxious about dropping the ball, about um, maybe like if my expectations of other people are too high, or sometimes even surprised when they're held responsible for a fire. So as a leader, do you get familiar with your team's responsibilities and ensure that each task has a primary owner? Um, obviously, with this, within a startup environment, a lot of tasks have co-owners or maybe like people doing multiple things at the same time, pivoting to different things. But assigning one primary person who is um, responsible 
for maybe any escalations or just responsible for getting everyone together. And that is at a very important piece. Um, the last thing I'm going to talk about today is psychological safety. And psychological safety is a belief that the team environment is safe for interpersonal risk taking. When team members don't trust one another to be honest, to be respectful, or to be accepting of one another, they have to invest additional energy to be on their guard all the time, to self censor, or to avoid looking foolish at all costs. This can be very draining and prevents people from raising concerns or sharing new ideas, and it can make it difficult to detach or take time for self-care. So what you as a leader can do to help your team achieve that ideal work-life balance is, again, by doing these six things, prioritizing, having real clarity, and so on and so forth. But besides work, in, besides a work environment, obviously your own well-being is also very important. Having resilience for yourself for whenever things are bouncing back or for when you're feeling burnt out, how do you build resilience for yourself? And then modeling those positive habits with your team so they also feel empowered to do the same or at least to feel that they, they can do the same, to, to have resilience and have their own well-being. But most importantly, really putting on your own oxygen mask first before helping others um, as you would on an airplane, because if you don't take good care of yourself, then your team are also going to be looking to you. But if you can't give that guidance to them, then the whole picture kind of falls, falls apart. Okay, so I'm going through very quickly right now. But again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the live comments. Um, next, I'm going to just share some practical tips on how you can achieve that work-life balance. So Hopefully some of you are already doing this, um, being transparent about your own work schedule and allowing your team to also be transparent about their work schedule, especially during COVID-19 when uh, like everyone basically is working from home. Um, a lot of people have to juggle between homeschooling their kids or just basically taking care of family members um, with work. So the work schedule these days are probably quite different from a work schedule in an, off, in an office environment when we're still able to go to the office. So being transparent about that, um, being aware of other people's schedules and being respectful of that are very important. And when possible, try not to send emails at night or outside of work hours. Um, again, I understand in the startup environment, work hours are basically 24 seven, perhaps um, when fires are burning, you just can't think about what is the normal work hour for me. So even understanding that if something is not terribly urgent, something that can wait as a leader, set the example to um, if you are going to send an email outside of normal work hours, at least caveat that it is not urgent, respond when you can. Um, or just maybe avoid sending these things outside of a normal work day as much as possible. And again, really understanding your team's work hours or work schedule these days could help because if you know for sure that some, some team member is going to be spending um, a couple of hours every day, the same couple of hours every day to be homeschooling, so maybe during those few hours you, you don't bother them, right? But that is not just on you, that's up to the team member also to share that. So do request that from your from your team Do empower them to speak up um, if if they're feeling suffocated or if they're not able to work at the normal hours like before. And yes, very important sharing with your team how you disconnect how you recharge sharing that um, could open up new ways that you can bond with your team maybe you all feel like you you can recharge over uh, reading a good book. Maybe you can start talking about different books. But really, the idea of sharing this with your team is to, again, empower them to do the same, to be able to disconnect, to recharge, um, and then hopefully they will be able to do the same following your behavior. Um, yes, helping your team build that emotional resilience is important, just like the previous slide. Um, kind of like putting on your own oxygen mask first. So if you're able to empower the team to do that for themselves, then it's it's a it's a little bit easier for you as a team leader, um, as the founder of a company. Um, so helping them understanding what they need, whether it's flexible work hours or something else, understanding that and helping to empower them to achieve that is very important. 
Um, lastly, on this slide, at least, um, take vacation. And maybe in this day and age right now with pandemic happening, travel restrictions, we cannot really travel anywhere. But please do take time to detach and really um, delegate things fully so you can not think about work if possible. Um, but allow that with your team as well. Allow your team to take vacation if needed, um, within reason, of course. The well-being of your team, of yourself, is very is critical for your longer-term growth as a company. So please do do that. Um, next, there is a bonus. So hopefully, um, you can think of at least one simple thing that you can try to incorporate into your week. This doesn't have to be uh, work-related necessarily. It can be maybe like just learning what works for you and your family. Um, from a work hour perspective, maybe you need to juggle that, um, but sharing that with that with your partner, with your family, um, or perhaps it's just taking care of yourself, maybe um, waking up a half hour early every day to to spend some time alone, to meditate or to to cook breakfast for yourself. So what is the one simple thing that you will commit to for yourself to improve your own well-being, your work-life balance? So I would encourage you to do that. Um, next section, we're going to talk about team culture. So again, a lot of these feelings um, maybe you can relate to, especially now that everyone is working remotely. Do you feel disconnected from the team? Does your team know what they're expected to do during this pandemic? So. There are a few things. Um, this slide I'm going to talk about first, uh, the work-related consequences of having a good team culture and what you can do as well. So the first thing, very first thing, um, as I mentioned before, even with work-life balance is prioritizing. But in this case, specifically prioritizing your OKRs um, for yourself, for your team, for the company. So really establishing what is a priority now with your leadership team, um, what is important for you now during COVID-19. And I'm sure probably a lot of priorities have changed since the pandemic happened. Um, having that priority shared with your team and also shared with your stakeholders, with your partners, with your customers, that is important to, to let everyone know who is involved what can be expected from the company, what is expected of themselves, of the employees, um, and also of, of partners and customers, what they can ask of you. So that's very important. Next, um, you might be wondering, how can I still drive impact as a leader? How can I still support my team as a leader during this time? So those two things are not at odds with each other. Supporting your team is driving business impact long-term. So you have to believe that. And to do that really, again, is prioritizing that prioritization. Um, what, what are you telling the team to drive impact on? What are you allowing the team to do during this time? Whether it is um, just focusing on their own well-being or um, focusing on a project that has been in the back burner for a while, but what is the most important thing for them? If, if they're able to get through this with you, with the, with the company during this time, then everyone will come out of it stronger. Setting expectations, um, similar to number one about prioritizing, um, really like setting expectations with yourself, with the team, with your partners, um, making sure that whenever your prioritization has changed, you communicate that. So if expectations are supposed to change, you are very transparent and clear about that. Um, we don't work in a vacuum these days, right? So whatever you're thinking about, um, do lean on your team, on your leadership team as well to help help you with that. Otherwise, um, really, it's very difficult to go this alone during COVID. Balancing goals. Yes. Um, again, I think it all comes down to prioritizing. Um, you can see the prioritization in all of these really underlyingly. Um, but besides just prioritizing, knowing that even if you prioritize something doesn't mean that the same owner has to be um, the owner of that that. OKR, that goal, um, and that never changes because times change. People's um, responsibilities and schedules change. So learning to prioritize not just the goal itself, but the person doing it, delegating, committing, and allowing people to set boundaries for themselves as times change, as their needs change, is important. Okay. So besides the work aspects of it, 
building social connection and empathy is also very key to maintaining and strengthening even your teen culture during this time. And while this is not the best time for really for the world, um, having a pandemic and uh, like a COVID-19 is not great for anyone, but you can see the opportunity in it to use this where everyone is working remotely to build that connection that um, you norm you might not be able to get so easily when everything is going relatively normal in an office situation because now everyone's suffering in a certain way but suffering differently. So how can you build that connection and that empathy with everyone? So here are some um, four four things that um, a lot of us at Google are doing. Um, very simple things, really, like just virtual greetings, saying good morning or like good afternoon to your team, one-on-one um, -on -one chats or having a group chat, either of those help, whatever makes sense to you. Um, just remember to be inclusive of everyone and, and don't forget to leave anyone behind. Um, remember that small talk still matters, even though, I mean, especially that we're not in the office in the same location, bumping into each other at the coffee, um, coffee lineup or something. Um, those are times when when you're able to really get to know someone. So perhaps scheduling time again one on one with um, each of your team members and encourage them to do so as well to just catch up on non work stuff to really understand like how are you doing, how is your family doing, um, remembering what they've told you a previous time, maybe asking about um, the things that they're struggling with, maybe homeschooling their kids or or maybe they're worried about family members abroad. Um, so following up on conversations, um, remembering the things that they've shared with you, um, that matters still, especially so during COVID-19. Um, the third point is, of course, again, like working from home doesn't mean you have to be available all the time. And the same goes for your team. So just remember that um, set time, set time off for yourself to have breaks during the day. Um, some of my colleagues have even set time to have lunch or to go to the bathroom because sometimes you find that if you're just sitting in one spot without going from like one place to another in a normal office environment, sometimes you forget to do that. Um, so remember to set break times for yourself. Um, lastly, on this slide, um, having a video conference can feel intrusive because again, people have different um, family issues uh, that they're they're dealing with, different challenges at home, or maybe they're just living in a tiny apartment that they're sharing with their partner. So they have to be aware of who's in whose background. Um, maybe there's a crime baby in the background too, right? So um, understand that maybe being online with your video on all the time is not absolutely necessary. Sometimes people just prefer to have their video off. Maybe a phone call suffices. It doesn't always have to be a video chat. Um, or just understand also that sometimes people don't have a quiet enough space um, for, for chats, even a phone call. So how do you help mitigate that? Maybe it's setting a call at a different time um, or Maybe it's more just a text-based communication, um, making a balance out of that. So you're not only just focusing on video um, that is helping your team feel like they're included as well. So um, lastly, I'm just gonna share some examples of what we've done at Google. Um, I'll just unclick all of these. So there are lots of great ideas at Google. Some people have shared links to concerts. There are a lot of celebrities, artists who've started live streaming on Instagram or on YouTube, their concerts, those are all free. So knowing when something's happening, you can set a time with your team to watch it together, maybe take a tour of a museum together, visit an aquarium, yeah, all those things. Um, there are also a lot of um, probably very talented people in your team, whether they are a DJ or they just play music or whatever passion it might be, set up time for people to share that with one another. Um, on my team, we've shared, uh, we've, we've had like um, cooking sessions because there's one person who loves to cook and she showed us how to make certain food together on video conference. Um, somebody who, who does yoga, so she led like a yoga mindfulness class with us one lunchtime. So there are many things you can do with your team beyond just talking about work, beyond just talking about like, oh, how's your family doing? I mean, those are all very important, but try to break away from the norm and do something fun together. Um, the, the two things on the side as well, on the right side, Google also has an amazing food team and um, 
I guess a, a gym team. I don't, I don't know what you call them, like a trainers, trainers team. Um, so they've also put up very uh, good tips on how to cook food at home, some recipes, um, and then some workouts that you can do at home as well. So I don't know if this is something that would resonate with you and your team, but again, some ideas that you can do uh, there. For practical examples, this is more um, kind of weird and wacky ideas. Um, we have done what we call pixel art using spreadsheet, where you're supposed to use a spreadsheet uh, to replicate masterpieces like the Mona Lisa. You can tell, obviously, it doesn't come out exactly the same, but it was a fun exercise. Or um, simply recreating famous art. I think this was a, a challenge online um, where you just take whatever you have in your house and you try to create famous art, famous art with, fam uh, with everyday items. Um, earlier in the beginning, we did the emoji quiz. That's also something that we do regularly in our team um, because there are just so many combinations of emojis that you can you, you don't even know exist that can mean things. So you just need somebody to set that up, organize it, and bam, there you go. It's a fun um, competition with the team. Um, yeah, dressing up for meetings or bring your, your family member, roommate to work, to your work call. Those are all fun as well, as long as you pre-plan ahead of time, make sure people are um, okay with it. The timing works for um, as many people as possible. So these are just some ideas for you. So at the end of my presentation, um, I, again, want to just put out two questions to you. From a work-life balance point of view, what are you going to commit to doing for yourself in terms of well-being? Um, what is that one simple thing? And then from a team culture point of view with your team, what do you want to do? Maybe just one thing again, you want to try a one thing a week to maintain and strengthen that team culture. So I challenge you to think about that and share this with your team as well. So everyone is trying to work on something is not, not just on you. Um, hopefully this helps you and, and your team. So thank you very much. Uh, I don't know if there are any questions. Thank you so much, Leanne. We actually have lots of questions for you. Okay. So just hang on a sec. But okay. I really like um, your tips and tricks. And I think um, the two questions that you pose back to our audience, uh, those are really relatable. You know, the one thing for self and the one thing for the team. And that will really strengthen everybody, both internally and uh, as a community. So thank you for that. So um, a couple of tips that uh, I like that you brought up as well. The food team, uh, I think I can be on that definitely. <laughs> and I'll start one of that for my uh, team members as well. Yes. Okay, let's pick up some questions. Uh, we have one question from Posey coming in from YouTube. And Posey is asking if you can advise uh, tip, some tips about managing employees on uh, for those who have to take a pay cut and how to motivate them to keep trudging along? Yeah, very good question. And unfortunately, this is affecting so many people, right? Um, I mean, comparatively, having a pay cut is better than not having a job at all. Um, but I understand it's still very tough. So I would encourage whatever decision you make that is maybe not so good, whether it's a pay cut or having to let someone go, really explain the why, the context behind it. Um, it's not a good decision either way, but if the employee is able to understand like, okay, well, this is much a much needed um, thing for the company to do for its long-term survival, then hopefully they're able to understand that this is not because, this is not a, a um, this is not because they were low performing or because of anything on their part. It is really like unfortunate external circumstances causing that. Um, hopefully when you're also, um, rolling out the pay cuts or um, doing this, you, you do it in a structured way. And it's not just, oh, let's, let's do a pay cut for all the lowest paying employees or the highest paying employees. So having a, a, a very thoughtful structure in place on who gets a pay cut and how much, and then explaining that back to your employees, that would be, um, that just gives a transparency and gives people peace of mind that again, is not because of them. It's external factors that no one can control. If you're able to even, um, if you're able to create an environment where you can say like three months later, we can revisit or three months later, something else will happen that is not, not so bad. You can promise that if you're able to make that promise, but if not, then just the transparency, the context, I think is key. Okay. Someone asked, um, our team communications are worse now than we're back at work after MCO. We communicate less with our team members. How can we improve that? Um, yeah, so hopefully you got some tips today from my presentation. Um, 
it's not forcing communication, right? But making it natural so people feel like you're reaching out to really your your concern about their well being or your um, really making trying to make sure that they're doing all right as a person as a human being not as just as your employee you don't want to come across that you're just checking up on them like are you doing the work you're supposed to be doing right so i think in this pandemic we can all learn to be more human more empathetic and hopefully over time the team sees that and you're able to have better communication um and again it's, it shouldn't just be top down just from you but if you model that behavior, other people are able to see that and start reaching out to one another. You encourage them to start reaching out to one another as well. That's how you grow your team culture and improve communication. I hope that helps. We have uh, one more question uh, coming in from uh, Monoktku. And Monoktku is asking, Liana, can you give some tips on how we can keep be, uh, maintain our professionalism while having online meetings at home? <laughs> so I would define professionalism, right? Like is wearing this professional? I don't know. <laughs> so I think it depends, um, yeah, how you define professionalism, first of all, but at the same time, what is professionalism during COVID-19? Obviously, I think we should still be inclusive and equitable within any environment, whether we have COVID-19 happening or not, we should be, um, yeah, we just we should just be respectful of one another. But whether, for example, whether you should still dress up for a meeting, I'm not sure, right? Um, whether you should just talk about work stuff in a meeting, that's up to you. That's, um, if you just talk about work stuff in a work meeting, then I would really encourage you again to have another meeting, another catch up with your team, where it's not just about work, not just about the professional things. Because um, I think nowadays, People, it is hard to to separate work and life. So the work, the professional side is just always on for most people. So um, is it too much to ask if you just keep asking people to like, you have to do this, you have to do that. Um, so I think it, it's, you have to judge what is professional, what you can give up a little so people can still feel that human element. And even if they're at home, can they maybe dress down a little bit, for example? <laughs> 